Hey guys, this is uh, part two for that uh, explanation, the spiritual um, interpretation of uh, Revelation. So I'm going to back up a little bit and say uh, just a bit. Um, so God, as being our creator, would have had to kill that which created us himself or what we were created by, okay? However, as God is God, and that is a mystery of how he actually does the unexplainable, rising from the dead and so on, uh, able to restart the whole process, but under his grace and also completing the works of salvation, and thus God's own word. So when God uh, allowed himself to be killed, um, what happened was, is since Jesus was his word, literally, that's where how we can create the new covenant. Uh, because Jesus, in effect, um, he represented the old and the new covenant. He was the first and the last, right? Um, so he represented both those covenants, and by allowing himself to be destroyed, allows for that new covenant, okay? Um However, as God is God, and that is a mystery of how he actually does the unexplainable, is able to restart the whole process, but under his grace, and also completing the works of salvation, and thus God's own word, or command, is then destroyed, so that we ha then have need for the new covenant, which Jesus ushered in, um, and, simplified the, and he simplified the law so that none could be exempt from it, due to its simplicity, and that simply to love. You know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Um, you can go at that from different angles. By loving him with your mind, you're appreciating the wisdom, right? Um, and then the second command that was uh, very similar to it, he said it was much like it, simply to love your neighbor as yourself. Um, so, spoiler that beast that comes from the sea with two horns and looking like a sheep but speaking as a dragon? Um, well, I guess I kind of fit that bill. Not because I am an antichrist, but because I understand these two horns, these two pillars of, uh, of wisdom. In other words, two trumpets, two leaders that were bound to both spiritual forces of God. Uh, his good and the destroyer part that comes as needed. <laughs> um, so, looking like a sheep and speaking as a dragon. And I'll just say for the, uh, for the record, I literally am a dragon. I was born in the right year to be a dragon. And of all things, um, when I, I got a bunch of tattoos and was defending my wife, was getting a cover-up tattoo, decided to get an extra one. I actually have a dragon uh, symbol tattooed right on my heart. Sucks, huh? Anyway, and like I said, I'm not Antichrist. Believe in God. Believe in Jesus as the Son of God. Understand at a way deep level, okay? Um, so, and this is, you know, like I'm saying... I'm not th that person you can say that they're supposed to take over the world or something. Um, I don't see it as that. It's a, uh, it's a process of transition. The three and a half years that everybody thinks are going to be fake years of peace and so on, um, that three and a half only represents half of a time, half of a, a period. If it was actually three and literally three and a half years of peace, it will be three and a half years of peace. But what happens is, once you realize that there's two halves to time, there's good time, God time, and then there's destruction time where nobody works. Three and a half and three and a half, seven, okay? God's completion number. Um, so, and like I said, it's not... It's not like I intend to take over the world, but because I understand these two pillars of wisdom, which God uses to teach us, 
okay? And the, these represent the two horns, the forces of good and of evil. This can be understood again simply by considering the two pillars that guided us through the desert, one by day when we work by following the law or God's commandments, and one by night when the law is not adhered to, and instead we are subject to the four horses of the revealing and the associated fears and directions that come with it. These are also the four winds that are withheld from the earth uh, during certain times so that people could be marked with the seal. Okay. Um, if we are not uh, conquered by God's law, then we will end up mixing it up with these four horses, okay? Um, and you kind of get what you get. Uh, and notice that one of them does find the scales and goes north. This, this king of the north that attacks should be associated with the church itself as the scales are given to this particular rider, okay? Uh, the two pillars, one of them is truth, reality, a way, the way, and life, okay? Real things, godly things. The other is ungodly, destruction, and God's ever-flowing judgment. Remember, every day has enough of its own troubles, and also God admonishes those who withhold wages from them who have earned them and by day to day, uh, what they've earned. So we can expect nothing different to occur with God's paying us, okay? We get paid on a day-to-day -day basis with all our troubles. Each day has its own. Um, and when, when you know, uh, each day has enough of its own troubles, and also God admonishes those who withhold wages from those who have earned what they've earned. So we can expect nothing different to occur with His paying us in what we have coming. And that, like I said, that happens on a day to day basis. That's why Scripture says, Be sure that your sin will be known. Okay? It's just how it works. He's got it covered. Um, so these two pillars are also representative, remember, spiritually, the two witnesses before God's throne. And the fire that they can call down from heaven is the Word of God, His wisdom, and representative of the guiding force of truth, reality, and wisdom. You'll notice that these uh, witnesses can only be killed in the same way, which is, you know, we're expecting fire out of their mouths. Uh, are you expecting to be able to breathe fire to kill, the, uh, to kill somebody? But what you can do is if this person is preaching God's word and they're bound to it, they can be killed in the same way. In other words, there's a unity in respect uh, to both sides, both forces, and that they're bound to God, and sovereignly so. Uh, so these two witnesses are actually good and evil, okay? They call down fire from heaven. It's the word of God, his wisdom, and representative of the guiding force of truth, reality, and wisdom. It's here that I will offer... Uh, it's here that I will offer that I seem to be one of those people... Uh, or the only one of these people <laughs> that I've met so far uh, that can see this construct of God's law and the associated justice that literally flows from it, his law and commands, like a river from his throne. By seeing both sides and knowing that God is teaching from the other end, okay, either through adversity or blessing, and that's Job 2.10, that one can begin to build a sense of mercy in your hearts for someone that has given way to the yoke of sin, which is God's easy yoke versus the burden of working the light. Okay? And also why Job calls his wife out for speaking as one of the quote-unquote foolish women. All right? And that can go all the way back to Eve if you really want to get back to the nuts and bolts of God's creation. But again... By seeing both sides and knowing that both witnesses count, okay, one finds that the best thing to do is stop kicking the goads or plainly attacking those who sin 
and it, because what we're doing then is we're blindly creating more evil by repaying evil with evil and why we are told to share the truth in love. With regards to the current status of these two witnesses at this point, at least for the U.S., lying dead in the streets, okay? Uh, neither good nor bad, the Spirit of God, His Holy Spirit, is truly working. And that's because without the, the second witness, with the head wound healed, uh, we will not know both witnesses. We'll only know of good. And we're supposed to know both because we supposedly took of the fruit. We're supposed to know good and evil. Um, the problem is, is too many people don't know why God would even allow evil. Where's What's it for? What's its purpose, right? If he's allowed it, it has a purpose, and that's what I'm trying to explain to you. But one finds that the best thing to do is to stop kicking the goads or plainly attacking those who sin, blindly creating more evil by repaying evil with evil, and why we are told to share the truth in love. With regards to the current status of the two witnesses, they are at this point, at least for the U.S. as I see, lying dead in the streets, neither good or bad, Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, is truly working. Sadly, by not knowing and acknowledging both forces, we're the ones who kick the goads, and thus cause the head wound of the second witness, the evil or the many. Okay? Now remember, Jesus came to give his ransom for many. Okay? That's to redeem the uh, the evil, right? Um, yeah. Chew on that for a little while. Uh, the beauty of this interpretation is, is once you can split God into these two parts, we can then talk about enmity here if we wanted. But much of what Jesus says then makes perfect sense. One of my favorites is to point to, I wish you were either hot or cold. In other words, serving either good or bad, and fully. <clears throat> because if someone is uh, facing God's pillar of wisdom, serving the good, what is behind one should be the Satan or the watchers, okay, who are really just doing their job of accusing. Uh, they are, if you are quick and your eye twinkles with wisdom, you know, fear is the beginning of, fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. If your eye doesn't twinkle, well, you know, and you don't get the wisdom part, that's the judging of the quick and the dead, all right? Um, so they are, these two uh, witnesses, if you are quick, your eye twinkles with wisdom versus dead, they are of a help to us, okay? Because they, as they accuse us and tell us what we're doing wrong, that's okay if, the, if they're accusing you of doing wrong. To say that you are uh, so locked up in sin that you can't prevent yourself from doing it and that Jesus got my back covered and I'm just going to keep doing what I want, wow, man, you're like way out of line, okay? <laughs> way out of line and that's why we're at where we're at now um, because people feel that way Jesus said we had to follow the law whoever does greatest in the kingdom of heaven whoever doesn't least in the kingdom of heaven very simple um, so the Satans are just doing their job of accusing and they are if you're quick and your eye twinkles with wisdom versus dead of a help to us even Job who was blameless was not sinless by nature as the Satan, just doing his job, the Satan, or in Hebrew, Ha-Satan, okay? Ha-Satan um, is how the Hebrew scripture reads the Satan. Ha-Satan is to say the Satan, like not the devil, but like the postman, the paperboy, the mailbox, just to point out that it's a title for something, like as if it's a role or a job just to be performed, okay? No big deal, not the ultimate bad guy, all right? And that's why he was actually able, the Satan was able to come in amongst the presence of God and just to like meet, hey, how's it going? And you're going, how come he doesn't like just snuff him out like right now? There he is sitting right in front of him. And then later in Revelation, you're even told that he'll get locked up for a thousand years and then let loose again. When you understand what good and evil are doing and the purpose for them, you understand why these time periods and things line up, okay? 
Um, but what happened with the Satan, and as far as Job, he was able to find fears in Job that he could attack him with. And hence Job's comments, what I have feared has come upon me. I would suggest that Mary, the mother of Jesus, had no other fears except for God. And thus the Spirit of God was able to come upon her as the chosen host for the physical birth of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And it was because she did not have any other fears. Remember, perfect love cast out all fear, all fear, okay? When you realize how God is working, that stuff back there can just get back there. And that's why Jesus said that to Peter when he was trying to derail his plan, get behind me, Satan, okay? Um, so maybe this will bring some clarity as to why Jesus said things like, get behind me, Satan, or things like being lukewarm. Do not let the, and another one, do not let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. In other words, to be rightly, divide the good and the bad, or self-serving that one does. Okay? What happens is, if you're facing God, I'm bound to the hot. If I'm facing the other way, I'm bound to the cold. If I'm sitting here in the middle, lukewarm, not doing what God says and kind of mixing it up with the earth, the earth, the dust, the stuff that is going to be redeemed, okay? Remember, we're just all dust with God's living force within us. Those Some living forces aren't ready yet. They're not redeemed yet. But we can redeem them uh, by understanding how God is actually working in his universe and in his creation, why evil exists and so on, why we don't kick the goads, and why uh, evil is a fruit that we need to not make anymore versus trying to stomp it out, crash it out, snuff it out kind of thing. Um, so, but... Again, that, that un, it then explains not, you know, what the left hand and the right hand is doing. If you got your hands in both, that's where God's word is then vomited from his mouth, okay? Um, it's foul, doesn't have any effect. And in a sense, uh, the churches today are kind of guilty of that because of uh, kicking against the goads and some of the things that we fight against and complain about, the things that we make a big deal, okay? And I'm not going to get into that stuff. That's for later discussion if somebody wants to bring it up. You want to find out where the churches are failing and what they've done wrong um, and so on. I tried to warn back in 2020 what was coming with COVID. And I also even saw all the, all the attacks in particular that were going to come against the church uh, with regards to um, a lot of different areas, abortion, same sex, and all of that stuff. Um, it's not that hard to see if you can back up and truly give uh, precedence and sovereignty to God, um, lay it at the cross, if that's how you want to put it, that God has it covered, okay? Um, so, so to get behind me, Satan, or things being lukewarm, do not let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. In other words, be sure to rightly divide the good and the bad, or self-serving that one does. Okay, so when the day comes that we understand these things, we will understand that the 24 elders do not only represent the 12 tribes of Israel, doubled, okay, as associated with the two pillars uh, of the door to God's temple. And thanks to Solomon for the pomegranates on the pillars, all full of seeds. Um, but they represent a day and the Lord's day when all is fulfilled and redeemed for his glory and his glory alone. The, the 12 tribes of Israel would represent the uh, all of Israel, okay, being satisfied and redeemed to God. The other 12 would be the 12 hours of darkness that just represents the Gentiles and every other believer faction uh, that you can imagine, okay? That's the 24 elders, the full day, okay, the Lord's day, first half being night, when no one works and the half an hour of silence before the big Lord's Day and then the Lord's Day when he himself provides the light. And again, in Revelation 22.11, let them be this, let them be that, let them be this. 
all bad looking stuff, but says to says to just let it go, right? Um, and and again, please reach out to me if you want to discuss this um, or even try to poke holes in this interpretation. I appreciate that. I'm looking forward to somebody to step up that this is kind of tweaked on your brain a little bit, and you're like, well, what about this then? Let's go at it, man. Let's figure this stuff out, okay? We're hurting out here. We've missed something because if God provides, a, that, and that's how I found this, is because if God actually provides a way out, I'm pressed to believe that God has a way out that I'm not seeing in all of this mess and that nobody else is either before I'm going to go shaking a finger at my God and saying, look what you've done to us. Why have you forsaken us? I don't believe that. I believe that God has built into his law beauty, perfection, love, peace, all of these things, okay? Uh, but anyway, if you so if you read any of this, you're interested in any of this, you want to reach out, I'd appreciate it. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm I welcome to somebody that wants to blow some holes in the interpretation um, of, of this portion of Scripture, and because it's to me it's read as a blessing, okay? Revelation to me is read as a blessing, but instead it's seen as destruction and chaos and, and some kind of a, you know, apocalypse of uh, doom, all right? Uh, my phone number, for your convenience, 716-229-1343. I'll post it in the comments once I get all these loaded. Um, and uh, I just want you to know that I'm like a math freak, okay? And I began to notice these patterns, numbers and such, in Scripture. And then as I started to research them, found out about my own Jewish roots and so on. And uh, the best I can say is uh, somehow with all this processing power up here, Hasidic. Uh, Gematra, um, numbers, patterns, the Torah's forward, backwards structure with bookends and so on. Uh, it just like blows my mind. And just like, I mean, how could so many different authors put this thing together and have it fit in this way okay it's like weird it's beyond weird it's inconceivably impossible that over all these centuries 66 and this is just our current you know if you, maybe the christian canon okay um 66 books 40 different authors you know hundreds of years of uh, scripture writing and then, and then you come across, uh, across areas of prophecy where stuff is uh, fulfilled so literally, like the scraping of Tyre, where it made a causeway to, you know, to took the rubble and made a causeway. There's scripture that said, you know, I was going to scrape up the rubble on you. And it's like all in there. It's in there. And um, there were people that wanted to discount the idea that this stuff was true until the Dead Sea Scrolls pop up. And then guess what? Well, now we got carbon dating, so we know that these things pre-existed and were written before they ever showed up. Um, but, you know, like I said, I'm a math freak, and when I began to explore and maybe calculate my way through the scriptures, and my best subject, just so you know, was algebra. It's a kind of math where you already have the correct answer, okay? You only need to plug in the data that fits whatever is needed for the whole to get you there, Okay. And since God is all things, one more bit of scripture from the Gospel of Thomas and the second saying of the Gospel, which is uh, more, the Gospel of Thomas is more of a collection of sayings than what we typically are exposed to and expect a Gospel to be constructed of because the Gospels that we read are like stories. The Gospel of Thomas is just a bunch of what appears to be random sayings, but these sayings don't make sense unless you can understand what I'm trying to what I'm trying to tell you about, and at one and these the, the Gospel of Thomas was actually found amongst the scrolls in Qumran. So why was it in there if it wasn't important enough to you know if it was just junk and shouldn't be kept right? Um, so Jesus said, uh, and this is the second saying of the Gospel of Thomas. Jesus said, "Let him who seeks continue seeking until he finds." When he finds, he will become troubled. And that's troubled. That's me. I am very troubled because I see this thing, right? When he becomes troubled, 
he will become astonished. And astonished is, for me, the idea that how could this be hidden for all these thousands of years, right? Why, why have I seemed to find this thing? Um, it's, it's the phrase where Jesus says, uh, I am amazed at how such poverty could exist in this place. And he's just saying, it's right here in front of your faces and you can't even grasp it, right? You can't even see this kingdom. Uh, but it's because we're fighting, we're fighting in the wrong way. Um, and we need to get to the, to the prophets, uh, the prophecies where it says they studied war no more because we know that war doesn't work. Why do we continue to do it? We just destroy, tear everything up, and then have to go back and rebuild it, never learn anything. We create evil spirits on the earth, which are the memories uh, of these times. These times come back. People want to retaliate. Um, even the Jews have given land to where the Palestinians lived. <laughs> Sorry, numbers. They've lived there for 70 years, 70 and a 10, perfection. Guess what? Why are we going back to try and reclaim land that's been there for a whole generation? Don't you have your feet on soil that you can keep and give a place uh, to these people? Um, we're all about rights and so on. And that's where Jesus' power came from by saying he rescinded his rights to say, I'm not going to exercise my right. I'm going to forgive instead. I'm not going to look back there. I'm going to look at this vision up ahead of me, this, this kingdom that I'm trying to build. And that's what that's how he focused and how he went. Don't look behind. Let the dead bury the dead. Um, so he said, uh, Let him who seeks continue seeking until he finds. When he finds, he will become troubled. When he becomes troubled, he will be astonished. And he will rule over the all. Now, you can say rule over the all. And what was he talking about? The all. Everything comes from the darkness. Everything is redeemed from the darkness, from the ashes, from back there. That is the all that you need to be, you know, not be concerned with. You can become ruler of it and that you choose to not gravitate towards it. You're literally saying, flee from me, Satan. Even if proverbially or just in instinct or just in promise to yourself, I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to do that again. You know, we say that all the time. I'm not going back there. That's a good thing to, it's a good way to think about it. Um, ruler over the all. Okay. And I would stress here that the ruler of the all would be over legion and thus able to serve God fully because we're not looking at that. And more, and more importantly, purely as each of us by ruling over legion will instead become a great nation each unto ourselves and for God's glory. When all of those forces within you are reigned and for God's glory, it's still part of God, right? And if you are able to reign all those forces within you and find, you know, your power to serve God, to grasp and know the Holy Spirit, you then become a great nation because you know God. Uh, I will say upon figuring all this out, especially with regards to our shipshod uh, response to COVID, um, uh, I find that I'm definitely quite troubled in trying to share what it is that I believe has been revealed to me. Okay. As for me, I, I just consider myself dust. Okay. It's a spirit of God. Okay. His life force given to me um, and you and every living thing that gives me life that I have. And any denial of that fact, um, you know, that, that, brings upon me or anybody the justices of a just, fair, and worthy God. Okay? So all forces are accounted for. All right? And may he and his son be praised forever and ever that we would know 
his blessing versus the curse, uh, he can also give. And guys, every knee is already bowing, whether you know it or not, okay? And even if you're in denial of any spiritual forces being involved altogether, um, God is in two parts. There's two pillars. You either follow the one or your servant to the many. And um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me, get back to me. Um, this is uh, hard to jam into a little session, but uh, fully willing to speak to anybody that wants to talk about this, trying to hammer out the details of it. If, uh, if you feel that if you can find that I'm wrong somewhere and we can't explain something, wow, man, you have taken a big burden off my back because this has just been a terrible two years uh, knowing that mathematically a Passover is how we should have approached COVID and that the, the countries that actually did um, uh, follow a biblical narrative, either knowing or unknowing, again, Romans 2.12, um, were blessed by it. Um, that being New Zealand, uh, and that they, uh, they actually held their death you know, total to 26 people and for the longest time during the first wave. And uh, only during the second wave did it then increase. And I believe that at this point now, I don't know exactly where they're at. Um, I think what happened was is they, they tried to say, okay, we need to get back into the economy thing. We've been locked down for a long time. We need to kind of join the world back again. They kind of got bitten a second time, but then backed out of it. And uh, I'm going to take a look and just see what uh, COVID numbers... New Zealand death today okay so New Zealand at this point um, 1087 deaths and that's as of today, okay? Um, America, one million. So, uh, again, and I'll gravitate towards one of our predecessors of our country that had such an impact that he actually developed the, uh, the food pyramid, trying to... Uh, uh, understand how it was that Eisenhower had his heart attack with fat around his heart and so on. Um, his name was Ansel Keys. He was a surgeon general when Eisenhower had his heart attack. And what he did was he said that, I'm going to go search for the healthiest nation on the planet who doesn't have heart disease. Find out what they're eating because I believe that 